Bing. There we go. Why is that not blue? All right. Hmm. See what? That's an interesting. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's yeah. turned off. But it, I mean, we're certainly getting video of it. Hey. So yeah. So welcome everyone. Hello. To Open Gundam style. Open Gundam style. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking here about Gundam. We're building Gundam plastic model kits. Hmm. Should be a lot of fun. Gundam plastic model kits. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh. So we have two here that we're going to be uh, assembling. So we've got here the uh, Build Strike Gundam full package from um, uh, Bill, uh, Gundam Build Fighters. So that'll be mine. And Evan here has got the Unicorn Gundam Banshee Norm Destroy Mode. Destroy oh, Mode! Oh, there we go. <laughs> Very nice. So we're going to start here. I built a couple of these in past. Um, this will be Evan's first time. So we're going to go in here, and we're just going to go at it as we go. Yeah, there we go. We've got the lid. The lid. I'm going to see if I can put that up there, and it will fall over. And what yeah. comes in these boxes? I see so, an instruction kit. An instruction kit. This is one of the nice things is that it's in sort of a universal layout, so we have to go through that one by one and uh, step by step. Step by step. Uh, it has some, some nice flashy pictures, obviously, of... Um, Fully assembled Gundam Ooh. model kits with the, uh, um, you know, color applied and neat stuff applied. Oh. Uh, this is the the full instructions, which seems a little uh, intimidating sometimes, but it's not too bad. It's in Japanese. <laughs> well, it's in Japanese, but you'll notice that each of the steps is numbered one, two, three, four, five, and then each part is also numbered. I can follow. I can follow these pictures. There we go. So um, to that point, so you also get different sheets of these plastic pieces, and each one of these has a letter on them. So this is, and we can see if we look in here, but here are all of our bits. So let's see here. This is, I can probably get that out so I can tell. Now, so, now comes the time where it sounds like we're eating chips. Right. <laughs> so this will have somewhere on here its letter, usually. There it is, C. This is C. Uh, this is G1. So each of these frames, each of these mm -hmm. frames has has a letter. A letter um, on be, it. Uh, see that this sort of tag right here. Uh huh. The and, large uh, tag. So I look for the large look tag. For the large tag. And the letter. So yep. something like yes, that. Like this there, you see, actually. There's a there as well. So the C there. Um, Mine has a big tab across the yep, top that has a. the big letter A stamped into it. Perfect. That makes it easier. Yeah. And they try to make these as easy as possible. The international language with the letter A. Yep. <laughs> that on the international uh, alphabet, but that's okay. And be very careful. These are beam sabers. Mm. So, beam sabers. Little red beam sabers for your 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 Gundam. Ooh. Very exciting. So okay, here's A. Here's E. So here's C, G1. So I'm, now I'm just putting them in order alphabetically, just so I can have a better idea there. Now these are packaged in a specific order. Like what's on top is generally what you start with. Uh oh. I personally prefer to have them in alphabetical order so I can get to them more, more logical. Um, it's totally up to you. Though. I there's like F, logic. There's B, A, B. Let's go F, with logical order. And then B, and that is extra little bits and bobs. Wow, lots of parts. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, this cool. one's tricky to get into. Mm. This must be the special pack. Ah, yes. Interesting. Um, would you like a... Oh, I see you've got a tool there. I do. So, so this requires a little bit of uh, handy tools here. It, it often does. So what we've got here for assembly is we have our, our razor blade. <laughs> down, boy, down. <laughs> um, also got some needle, needle nose pliers that can be e uh, convenient getting these out of here. And we've also got some uh, basically wire cutters, so that's useful for getting in there and, and getting those uh, sprues off very, very uh, carefully. Sprue. Sprue. Yeah. What's a sprue? The sprue is a little bit that, that uh, connects the part to the the plastic frame. And we also have here somewhere um, sandpaper. Sandpaper. And so I have that right here. We go. Sandpaper. And so we'll use that if there are any uh, bits and bobs that are still attached. We're gonna sand those uh, down to get nice, nice and, and nice smooth. And smooth. 
Now, to that point, if you don't plan to paint this, you got to kind of think about your sanding. Um, mm. Sanding will obviously change the color of the piece a little bit. Oh yeah. When you sand it down. So normally, if you're if you are experienced with this, you don't care if you're going to sand it. You're going to paint it all anyway. Um, but that is definitely something to kind of think about. Nice. nice. All right, so we have our pieces out of our plastic, more or less. The labels are going last. A little paint, and you'll see this is—I mean, that's about it. I mean, there, I got some, some tips, labels, some extra decals. decals there. Yeah, nice. so those go on <laughs> the end. It'll be fun. So, All right, so now we can get on to starting our initial assembly. And what we've got here is, in this case, so you'll see in mine we start with G1. We need two parts of that, and PC. We need two parts of those, and the PC, I believe, hmm. is yes, this right here. This little, this little set of things right here is PC. Now these are the these these frames mm -hmm. feel like they're made of different styles of plastic. The PC ones mm -hmm. feel softer. Yeah, and here I have a frame F that's two forms of plastic as well right, right. so, so um, these PC ones are I believe they may be PVC actually I'm not entirely sure um, I'll get beaten up by folks uh, but for not having that answer um, but it is a plastic that basically um, uh, allows the joints to move more smoothly so they'll so, connect in very very nicely so these these are not just a model kit but a model kit that moves exactly yes very poseable and with the multiple plastics there's multiple mm. Materials exactly nice. Yeah, it can be posed. It can be posed. Very posable. Yeah, you'll be able to put it in pretty much any pose you want. Hmm. So I'm just rubbing. Whoops! It just popped off and just <laughs> fell down. Of course it did. No, it's right there. It's right there. Never mind. <laughs> Keeping track of the pieces. Track of the pieces. <laughs> that right there. Um. So I'm just sort of rotating these pieces to get them off. I'm just going one at a time. Hmm. So what's your first piece? So first my first part, number one, mm -hmm. is E16 and G2 and E17. All E16, right. 17, and G2. All right. So go ahead and find those parts. And so E. 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 Uh, e. One other thing that I found is um, I needed Band-Aids. But generally in life. <laughs> Let's see. So E16. E e I figure E16. Part two. Okay. So I'm popping off these, this bit here. And when you get, and when you get to a piece that has it's on at multiple um, places. I like to just bend it over mm. and over again until it just pops right off. Uh huh. I have this is. I think is going to need some two of those. Yeah, that's going to need get some clippers. There we go. F D C D one A A B C D. Okay, and that is going to need some sanding. P C G G two G one D two. So for those watching, e. as you can see in there, there are some significant bits where that came off. You can see like right there where a bit of the spruce is still Oh, on the there. nub so of the plastic is yeah. not, it doesn't separate completely not, from the not frame. Not completely. So I'm going to go ahead and just sand that off. So a little bit of yeah. nipping. This is also where it can be handy to have um, hmm. something like... Oh, like a little snips? A lot of little snips, or you can use a razor blade. Like if, it's, if it's coming off, you can slice it off. I'm fine. It's sanded right off. Um, but just as an FYI. And that same thing here. I can even clip that using snips. That might get it off if I get the right angle on it. Again, you kind of got to decide how much damage you want to put to your plastic there in terms of the, the coloring, this coloring. But I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah. I will grab a little set There we go. Snips. Okay. And then, then actually, and that's that, the that same. Out. Yeah, that, that turned out quite There nice. we go. Actually, I could get a little more off there. D E16. That was a little bit like battle damage. 18, anyway, so 16 and 17 right okay. there. So now I'm going to attach these two bits here. 
So now this is my first Gundam model. Yeah. And Very they cool. come in a variety of different sizes? They do. Hmm. And um, this is the smallest, the high grade. And they go up to, I forget the name of the, the largest. They, they, they made like a, um, uh, one that's like this tall. So it's really big. Um, but that was a one-off. Oh. Uh, one -off. They, they, they sold it to the public, but um, they don't make a, a bunch of those. It's just the, the original Gundam was the only one ever made of that size that I'm aware of. It goes high grade, then master grade, and then I think perfect grade. I think is is a really big complicated one. What's the size that I could fit in? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go to Japan for that one, sadly. <laughs> all right. So there's so for those watching, all I did here was pop in these two pieces. So I now have these side bits on there. So that's, that's that first section, and then it's going to show you here. So I did that. So that then becomes this piece. Which I'm going to attach to C14 and G1. Hmm. Uh, G11. So let me find a C14, A, B, C, that is, yep, C14. Ah, uh, yes, and here's again, hmm. oh, good, chop it off. Oh, well, yeah, that stands out pretty easily once you get it on there. Yeah, yeah. And they are kind of designed that way. In fact, you'll see that the screws are very gently connected. They're very, very careful. They spent, they spent decades refining this. So, Gundam models have been around for a number of years then. Yes, all the way back to the original Gundam series. Um, it was actually arguably one of the things that saved Gundam. Um, it was not hugely popular when it first came out. But when they um, uh, released the Gundam model kits, Bandai, the toy company that was licensed to do that, they just happened to be releasing the G1? No. Um, they just happened to be releasing a... Um, a new set of model kits, plastic model kits that were extremely customizable. So folks got these G11, um, folks got these very customizable model kits and because Gundam, as we talked earlier today, is more of a war story than it is a sort of a, a standard kid with a giant robot hero story. Hmm. Um, if you wanted to re- you know, do dioramas of major uh, moments in the series. You needed multiple kits. Wow. Um, you know, you wanted to 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 show off these battles and the whole lots of battle minutes. scene. Yeah. Exactly. So there was a lot of des uh, desire and demand for lots of these model kits. Um, so the, the demand for that was enough to get people really um, um, interested in Gundam and and get them funding for making more Gundam series. So now, uh, yeah. now these these kits don't require any glue. Correct. Yeah, no, you just put them together. Um, you could glue some parts together if you wanted to. Hmm. Um, but you'd want to be careful about doing that. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're thinking of doing that, I would assemble the model kit first hmm. and then disassemble it and glue the parts that you want to because there's a lot of subtle motion in these um, in terms of like allowing an arm to move in, in certain spots. Ooh. So sometimes if you glue together a part, it's going to be a little harder for that to move. Hmm. Um, but no, these are all snapped together, which is really nice. And of course, you can have very, very specialized equipment for this. Bondi is happy to sell you all that. <laughs> oh, that snaps together quite easily there. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Got my first piece together. Nice. And Nicely done. Adding the special soft pieces. Mm -hmm. hmm, PC5. PC5. That would be this one. Yeah, the detail of these, of the, the giant robots, allows for a much more interesting and much more intricate kit, hmm. uh, which is also one of the appeals. And, oh, there goes the chest. And it's not quite, there we go. So. This is this is this is a little bit more complicated than some of the younger folks would do, but mm. maybe. Uh, yeah, I'd say maybe eight years old. Eight years old as a minimum, and then up from there. Again, it depends on the, uh, on the kid. Some kids are going to take to it naturally, and yep, just and for some of them generally, you know, their <laughs> their their parent is going to be the one who really builds the kid. A good good uh, team. Team effort exactly, there. Exactly, yeah. 
And it's a fun thing just to kind of get your kid used to the idea of building things, putting things together. Oh. Adam Savage of Mythbusters says he used to uh, do a lot of this stuff as a uh, as a kid. He was always building stuff. All right, then we get that into here. Oops, wrong, wrong direction. Just snapping that joint. So there goes that. Nope, it's not right. Huh. This really, this really ah. is an. An, an interesting exercise in visual spatial yeah. skill and exactly dexterity. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what that means. And interpretation. <laughs> yeah, and and just getting a feel for what they're actually what is actually here. C fifteen. Now, just oh, mm. very nice coming together. Yeah, a bit of torso there. Now, just a little while ago, we started watching the original Mobile Suit Gundam. So what were your sort of overall thoughts on that? Well, uh, unlike some anime, it seemed pretty serious-based. Yeah. Uh, it was... Uh, there, the, the, the moments of humor were, were more real-life humor rather mm -hmm. than contrived. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the storyline took over uh, yeah. immediately. And so... There's quite a bit of depth to it with that more realistic approach. Mm -hmm. Of course, with all sci-fi, there's a certain amount of getting into the story and the mm -hmm. background. Yeah. Of course, you have to say, okay, yeah, there's spaceships, <laughs> and this is the scenario, and that's set up in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it seems that they, they as far as sci-fi, they're dealing with uh, issues on a pretty good basis mm -hmm. there's points where they do have gravity and points where they don't have gravity mm -hmm. it's not just taken for granted that there's yeah. gravity in space and they even have issues with it at some points <laughs> yeah um it even becomes sort of a uh, a a tactic is you take out uh, gravity and then that becomes a problem for people in the ship as they have to flail around without gravity <laughs> uh, sometimes i flail around <laughs> yeah. even with gravity <laughs> exactly uh, okay, B. The Gundam was the, um, it's generally considered to be the first Gundam series to, well, the, 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 I'm sorry, it's considered to be the first mecha series to really treat mecha as a serious topic. There's certainly been, been serious science fiction anime before that, um, like Star Blazers, mm -hmm. uh, Space Battleship Yamato, um, and uh, Captain Harlock and, and such things. Mm -hmm. But this is the first giant robot show to really take that more science fictional sort of Larry Niven uh, Asimov kind of, a, of an approach mm. to such things. Now, now you use the term mecha. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that develop, and what's that stand for? Yeah. What's that really mean? So mecha stands. For, so mecha is a term for. I did this in the wrong order. Um, <laughs> That's not what it stands for. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. Okay, That's fine. Um, so mecha. Well, it's, it's actually a very uh, interesting point. Mecha in Japanese technically just means mechanism. Mechanism. Um, mm. So um, any uh, mechanism is mecha. So a car is oh. mecha, um, technically speaking. Over time, uh, because, well, the, the first mecha series, uh, anime series, was called Gigantor, or Tetrajun 28. Gigantor. Gigantor. And that was a definitely a, a big thing. People were, were um, it was hugely hugely popular. Oops, sorry about that. Um, hey, lightsabers. Hey, Chris. Um, yep, we're we're building on uh, gun model kits. Um, <laughs> Join us. <laughs> um, nail clippers are good for taking the nubs off. Good to know. Nail yeah. clippers I like that idea. Um, nice and portable too. Exactly. And, and multitasker. It's <laughs> and it's got the file on it. You can. Yeah, true. Well, some of them do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, um, uh, so it goes back to Gigantor as the first mecha anime series, mm. and because th these shows had these big mechanical um, um, machines in them, they were called mecha series because that was kind of the giant machine, giant, giant mechanism, machine, right? Mm. And so mecha and it sort of became a synonym for giant robot. But even in Japan, you hear people talk about being a mecha designer on a show that has no giant robots because they're designing um, powered armor suits or they're designing ships or whatever. 
Um, which generally speaking, if you hear mecha, you think giant robot. <laughs> That's what come, came to mind for me. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, quite um, quite the thing. Actually, Sunrise, the studio that made Gundam, was formed explicitly um, to specialize in making mecha anime series. These are so profitable. Really? Yeah, they're so. Is that popular? Um, well, not just popular, profitable. Both. Uh, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, they... the, the, the the toy companies make so much money off of them that it was very easy. It's very easy to um, uh, to get people to to fi finance them. So it made a lot of sense for them to say, "Hey, we're going to do these really well. So work with us because." We will get. We will make that like a series really, really effectively. Hmm. Um, sort of like a sponsor to get the story off the ground. Exactly, and you know, almost all anime series are, are made that way, where there are various companies sponsoring the production of that show. Um, but with Sunrise, they said, "Let's get a toy company first and foremost. Uh, we'll design all these giant robots, and you know." So not just a there. sponsor, but it's part of the story. Exactly, and then they can work with the the um, that toy company to say, "Okay." Um, you know, how many different toys are, can you manufacture? How many should be put into the show? That kind of stuff. So you can actually be fairly um, specific and detailed about these things. Ah, so now we're putting in D5. That's exciting. So yes, yeah, so Sunrise actually w was founded as a essentially a mecha uh, anime studio. And that's one of the reasons why if you watch um, Sunrise series, often the giant robots are animated more cleanly and more beautifully than the human characters are. <laughs> uh, I think that's just what they specialized in. That's what they're good at. Where's B? Now, Where's B? There's B. B5. Oh, looks Where's like B5? I pulled Let's out. Pull I see that I, it's a good idea to keep track of whether you're on A, B, or C, because yes. the same number, if you pull it off of a different <laughs> one, is not the same oh, no. part. <laughs> so I have uh, pulled off a part too early. Pulled off a part too early. Oh. A ah, I am assembling a no, seven. B5. Bingo. That's B five. A four. A four. A ah. There we go. Oh boy, this is a tough one. Hmm. Tough one. So this is um already requiring a decal, which is very, very small. So I got to decide how I'm going to do that because I'm not going to be very good at that. Decal application. Well, we do have a magnifying glass. That's true. Um, yeah, they want to close it. Unfortunately, we can't really zoom in very close on that on, on the live stream. But we are recording this from multiple angles, so in the in the final episode, you will see close-ups of all of this stuff. Hopefully, yes. Yeah, so I've got these two little bits right here, and it looks like I've um, got mm -hmm. something similar. Oh wow! To, yeah. So and, I, and they want me to put a label on one of these. Whoa, that's but, tricky. So that's going to be interesting. Definitely a uh, magnifying glass for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm encountering something similar. Uh, yeah, the eyes. So they want me to put the eyes on on the Gundam. Um, I can. I'll give it a try. No. Okay. So I've got number four. Now, every time I try to do this, it ends up not being correct. But I'm going to try. Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. We need to come in here. Again, you guys will be able to see this better on the on the final video. Um, I'm going to. Oh, actually, yeah, we have a thing for this. One second. There we go. It's over here. I'm going to put the part on this thing, if I can. There we go. And so I'm going to put the Gundam's eyes right there. There we go. Nice placement. Thank you. The only reason I can do this is because I've got it clamped down. Otherwise, this would be a complete mess. There we go. So then we pop this little bit on. Where does that go? It goes into, ah, there's the the bottom of the face. There we go. So there's the uh, the mouth with the eyes. Good. Wow. 
All right. Very detailed work. Yeah. Wish I bought these this thing years ago. <laughs> Having a good magnifying glass seems yeah. seems to be very useful. Mm -hmm. Now I have oh, I need another one too. Wow, okay. I have one um, coming up as well, but it looks a little so different. On E8. So yeah, Gundam's a very uh, serious show. You said the humor is much more in the little bits and moments um, as opposed to ha ha ha. Real life humor rather yeah. than uh, a contrived or mm -hmm. entertainment style humor. Right. You also notice there's been no fan service so far. No fan service, no. Yeah, that will change. But that's <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, yeah. Even that's pretty minor. They're also equal opportunity fan service, which is kind of refreshing. Now this has an exclamation yeah. point. Ah, e nineteen. Where do you see that? Over here. Ah, yeah. Now the symbols that they have in mm -hmm. the instructions include some, some that make sense, like yeah. times two, and some that make me think caution. Yeah. Hey, pay attention <laughs> to this, like That's the exclamation point. Probably a reminder to um, make sure it's oriented the right way, because mm. um, that, that those parts are only going to fit in one direction. Uh -huh. Just make sure you've got it um, oriented correctly. And you should be good to go. Hmm. Right, so there goes well, this could that. be very specific. These things look really weird when they're, I mean, uh, <laughs> this is Gundam head. It's very, very strange. Um, then I need E5 for the other half. There it is. CB. Gundam Bill Fighter special episode. Yeah. Well, he's doing a, a unicorn Gundam, so uh, yeah, I, I I wish we could do what we did in Gundam Build Fighters, where we could actually battle with these things. Let's see if that there we go shot is yep. uh, somewhat Banshee clear. Norn. <laughs> unicorn Banshee Norm, Norn. One day you'll you'll watch that series. Hmm. You need to watch your own giant robot in action. Imagine that. Giant robot action. <laughs> okay. No. Um. That, oh, and then, and then again, we get another uh, decal on this one. So we're going to put the, the little light on its head. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, it's coming in. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Hmm. Okay, let me just clip this again. What I might do. P19. I'm going to grab this. I'm sure. sure. So I've got my extra piece yeah. here. Mm -hmm. My built piece here and the one I'm working on there. Cool. And I have E19. Oh. I'm going to hold this by the. How am I going to hold this? D. There's really no hmm. good way to hold it. I might just. Hmm. Piece of tape. The head. <laughs> yeah, I might do that. Um, hmm. E. Ah, that's I break that way. That might break it. E19. That's actually okay, I think. Hope it doesn't snap. <laughs> All right. And so we're putting in label 12 or decal 12. I'm calling them labels for some reason. Hmm. Uh, oh. Wow. That is tiny. That is absurdly tiny. Again, if I were doing this as a like professional or a, a serious modeler, I'd spray paint in this little, oh, and it tore in half. Dang it. Ah, the decals, the yeah. tricky, tricky parts this of the decals. may not end up. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do this. At that point, we get the single hair paintbrush <laughs> and get yeah. the magnifying glass out. Yeah, and... that is, in fact, the, the decal just dropped. Oh, there it is. It's now on the edge of, oh, no. Okay, the decal just dis uh, dis disintegrated. So I'm going to have no decal there. So that may be something I'm going to spray paint later. I will, that, that'll be a, a job to uh, experiment with, with with that. Such is life. With a lot of model kits, mm -hmm. there's the opportunity of just doing it out of the box or mm -hmm. customizing it or yeah. uh, getting more detail in by uh, doing refined painting besides mm -hmm. what's in the box. Mm -hmm. So... I wonder, is that is that a common practice to paint before or after? Um, generally speaking, you're going to paint before. Um, now, often what you'll do, let's see where this is supposed to go. 
Um, that goes, gosh, that's absurd. Let's see what I can do. Okay, can I go? We went in there. Sweet. Um, now, often you're, you know, when you're painting a, a model, it's because you've done 20 of these before, and you've probably mm -hmm. done this model kit before, and you know exactly how all this is going to go together. So you can spray paint very um, specifically. You know exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, generally you spray paint before, but then you also do some spray painting afterwards for detail and, and highlights. Um, hey, Coachin. Yeah, plenty of fan service in Gundam Sound. You're, you're absolutely right there. Um, the problem with GoPro cameras is we need to we need to route all of them through to the live streams. So that is the kind of the, the big big downside there. Um, okay, so I've got that. So now, oh, now we attach all the little horns on the top of the Gundam because you got to have all the antennae and such. D one, there's a D one. C F. Yeah, sure enough. Love those horns. <laughs> For some of the refined stuff, it's a mm -hmm. little tricky just figuring out which way to position. Yeah. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. One of the nice things about having a no glue model kit is you can always take it apart. So don't despair if you realize something is not in right. You'll be able to fix it. That is to all of those guys watching and gals. Now, just like carpentry, mm -hmm. it seems... A good practice is measure twice, cut, cut once. once. Yep. Very and, much so. and so cross-referencing is the diagram <laughs> <laughs> matching up the part. Oh, yeah. this part is okay. It's in a different position than I thought yeah. it was. Oh, and that's an important point is that often in the instructions, they will rotate a part that you finished into another angle when you're working on it in the next step. So you want to keep an eye out for that to make sure that um, the part that you're working on is not now 90 degrees angle. Um, yes, Chris, we plan to do this uh, in the future. In fact, we're probably only going to do this model kit for half an hour or so. Uh, and then we'll do more of these in the future just because of general time constraints. Um, is that E1? That's, yeah, that's how it comes out. Ah! <laughs> I almost needed a band-aid there myself. Oh, it's a great sense of accomplishment seeing things come together. It is. <laughs> I'm just popular today. <laughs> now, what is that? That is a little. Thing. It's lawn mowing season, so I'm. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sucks. Um, oh, there's a little horn that goes on there. It clips on like that. And then let me grab, what do we want? We want B3. That isn't what I just did. I don't think so. That's GB3. Ah. What's also worrying is when you go for a part and it's already off of the model kit, uh, already off of the sprues, and you realize, I already used that part. Something's not right. <laughs> that, that's not good. Where's the part? Why is this part missing? <laughs> I've yet to have, and of course, I'm not exactly a hugely experienced model kit maker, but I've yet to have any one of these come without parts on the uh, uh, the plastic models. They do a good mm -hmm. job of that. Good quality control. Yep. So the red bit. So that goes there, and then the red bit fits on the front. Oh, yeah, the little red doohickey. Um, that goes there. There we go. Uh -huh. And then this goes on clips. Ah, that definitely needs to come off. Okay. So I've got a bunch of screw on this thing to cut off. Hmm. That's not going to be happy. Now, some of our more experienced... Mm -hmm. There was a term you used for plastic model kits. Gunpla. Gunpla. Yeah, that is the technical... That is technically what these are called in Japan. Gunpla. Uh, Same for Gundam plastic model kits. Ooh. And um, so if you see them in Japan, they're referred to as gunpla. Gunpla. 
Is is that uh, a common term, or is um, it mostly people who do this know the term and people who don't? That's a good question. Um, I'd say yeah, generally. I say that the average consumer is going to call them a whatever would be the Japanese for a toy or model kit or whatever. Mm. But the um, anyone who knows what they are would call them a, a gun pro. Mm. Um, it's kind of like Gundam, you know. Someone who doesn't know the, um, Gundam is going to call it a, you know, a robot. Robot. Yeah, <laughs> but we know better. It's a Gundam. That's a not Gundam. just a robot. <laughs> it's a Gundam. Those are not just droids. Exactly. <laughs> Those are not robots. Those are Gundam. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody Hello, has, Chris. oh, thanks for thanks for joining us. Hey, Chris. Yep. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty major uh, industry in Japan. I mean, they have a whole um, uh, convention just for Gunpla. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are there any conventions that they have in the U.S. for this? Or? Not that I know of. It Not hasn't yet. really cut, off, cut on over here. Um, which is funny because the, the prices are good even in, in America. So you, know, you can buy one of these guys for 15 to 20 bucks. Um, and then move up, but they're about the same price they would be even in Japan. So you have plenty of options. Well, that's pretty neat, because usually yeah. things in Japan seem like they're a different price. Mm -hmm. Much more expensive. I need to get a bit more off of this thing. <laughs> it's a very tight fit on this particular part. But when it's in there, it's going to look sweet. Let's see here. So, it was also interesting about Gundam um, is how the plot evolves very, um, very organically out of uh, a the first episodes, where you don't really understand quite what's going on, but you figure it out as you go on. It seemed that it was coming at me very fast. Mm -hmm. Lots of new. Uh, People, characters, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, mm -hmm. different crafts yep. that they were working with. And uh, once I started identifying, oh, okay, uh, uh, who each of the characters were mm -hmm. and, and some of the plots, I started getting, getting uh, uh, the locations, I started getting into it and keeping track of it. And it's funny how the different sides, uh, the Federation and Xenon have different names for yeah. uh, some of their crafts mm -hmm. uh, based on their knowledge and reconnaissance yeah yeah how um white base is called uh the trojan horse by <laughs> zeon because you know it, it showed up out of nowhere this this um this neutral or um, non-military colony side seven or cluster of colonies side seven that isn't fitting in there what am i doing wrong <laughs> the fun um, of, of figuring out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it goes in that way? Really? That can't be right. Maybe it goes in up there. E18. Go? It's got to fit in somehow. Hmm. So if it goes in there, then it's completely... Oh, no, there it is. Oh. Ah, huh. Interesting. It's taking it shape. Right yeah, it's taking shape slowly. It's turning into a Gundam. All right, so there's my head. There's my torso. I think I can pop on. I don't want to do that just yet, but I'm going to do it anyway. Ah. Yeah, so at some point in the there. future, we'll we'll see what we can do to get a really good tight shot for you guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, macro lenses at some point in the future. Yeah, we're working <laughs> on having several different webcams set up and we can swap between them, but we're just not quite there yet. Um, that's true, Chris Hunt. They do have uh, contests at Anime Con sometimes. Oh. So you can uh, submit your gunpla. It's often part of the uh, the artist alley, the artists. Um, what do they call that at conventions? The um, artist alley. Um, the, the, the artist. There's always, there's always uh, a little um, area off to the side where they have paintings and such. You can uh, the art auction. The art auction. Yeah, the art auction. They'll have a few things you can auction off or otherwise uh, appreciate. I've seen some amazing gunpla built that way. That would be fun. Next time, next time I go to an anime convention, I can go up and look at that and really appreciate all the yeah. work that goes into it. And, exactly. And of course, the story behind <laughs> <laughs> the character. Cool. All right, we are at about half an hour. 
we've been chugging along here. So um, where are you actually at this I point? I am little by little uh, attaching little. decals. Huh? Cool, yeah. <laughs> still, yeah. still in the formative stages. Yeah, you picked the game to take shape. You picked a, a, a relatively complicated um, a model kit in terms of number of little bits and bobs on it. <laughs> so it looks like um, you know it's the it's a fairly standard number of pieces, but just lots of little decals and different kinds of plastic. But that's cool because it makes it a much more um, detailed piece. There, there's uh, a lot, the, lot more stuff to the, it. The challenge of details. Yeah, exactly. You're doing great with those, those decals. That's great. The magnifying glass helps quite it a sure, bit. It sure does. We, we picked this up at uh, Radio Shack that was uh, going out of business locally for about 20 bucks. So if you can find it or eBay it or something, this kind of stuff is really useful, especially if you have these little clamps. Oops, sorry. Another store that uh, is useful that has some some devices like this, mm. jewelers loops and uh, uh, head uh, headband style mm. glasses mm -hmm. that you can pop in different magnification lenses will allow you to do the more refined work. Nice. And when you do a really good job in the small details, mm -hmm. the collective of the small details really add up to a big difference in yeah. the overall picture when you're finally done. Yeah. It, it is worth, when you're doing a, a gun and model kit, um, to be willing to not be intimidated. When I first did a model kit, I was really scared that it would come out looking terrible. So um, uh, instead, of, instead of worrying too much, you can absolutely start very simple um, and just you know get a $15 model kit and try it out. And if it doesn't work out, then that's fine. You, you pop it into a box. But uh, um, in other words, it, it can be worth getting a starter spare kit and then mm -hmm. uh, uh, moving on from there once you've really gotten yourself uh, familiar with. What's the biggest gunpla I have ever seen in real life? Ooh. Um, would be the, um, I've seen some master grades that are about this. Well, actually, no. Um, well, technically, I've seen the full-size Gundam in Tokyo. The full-size so, yeah, yeah, Gundam. The, the one, one, one to one scale. Yes, one to one scale. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, so that, that's a big gun. Um, I guess gun metal. Um, <laughs> But uh, so I've seen that, and then um, I don't think I've ever seen the like meter tall uh, RX seventy eight that they they had. I've seen that on like TV shows and such. But um, um, other than that, in in the in there, yeah, they had some of the, the you know the really big um, uh, big ones all all dolled up, um, and in the. Oh, what's it called? There is a an anime industry uh, sort of space in Tokyo in Akihabara, and they have a there's a little um, space for a quasi museum for current anime works and past anime works, Ooh. and so they'll have a production artwork up there, backgrounds, cells, um, drawings, things like that, and they had a few uh, kind of model kits up Ooh. there, so I saw some of. The, some of those, and they were some of the, the, the big, really detailed ones that obviously, like somebody at Bandai had actually put together. So, um, so those were those are pretty cool. Um, yeah, so there's there's plenty of stuff out there. Well, now, do people do mixes of different kits? Yes, absolutely. In fact, Gundam Build Fighter, um, what is sort of a celebration of that. Um, one of the things that's ex um, expanded over time is this idea of Kit bashing different uh, Gundam model kits. Kit together. bashing, yeah. Oh. Um, which is actually, so, it's, it's weird. You'll hear um, Japanese people say kitbashu, kitbashu, and uh, and it, which comes from Star Wars. And Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, so they, so um, in the original Star Wars film, when ILM first started up uh, to build all of those, you know, Star Destroyers and Death Stars and so forth, they would go out and they'd get model kits uh, of you know, tanks and destroyers and things like that. Ooh. And just take out all these pieces and clip them off and just start gluing them onto uh, uh, Star Destroyers and such. And uh, you can actually go and you can find parts lists for which, you know, Panzer tank model kit to get, to get these little bits and pieces oh, to, wow. for the, you know, um, certain uh, Star Destroyers. Um, and they call that kit bashing. They would just take these kits and bash them together. Um, and so in in uh, 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 in, uh, in in the hobby, often folks will build their own custom 
Gundam model kits, and they'll take a bit from there, a bit from there, and make it together. The and best that, of every character. To that <laughs> point, um, it's probably ready there. The interchangeability. So if, wanted to, if I can grab that, mm -hmm. oops, oh, oh. <laughs> I can pop this head right onto that. Look at that. That guy. Interchangeable um, parts. Interchangeable parts. And uh, if, oops, I popped that off for you. It will come back out of there. There we go. Cool. That will slide right back in. So a person could yeah. come up with a completely unique, mm -hmm. never-before-seen Gundam. Exactly, yes. Um, My and, own personal Gundam. And, I mean, if you wanted to, you could file bits off of there, glue new bits on. Um, you could really play around with it and make something really that you really want. So, for example, some people don't like the little crowns on these things. Mm. So you might pop that off and not include that. We might file them down, what have you. So lots of different options there. Uh, and it's just it's really up to your imagination. And so Bandai has responded to this by making their model kits more and more customizable. So um, they're much more on a sort of a central skeletal frame, which you can then swap out. Well, wow. and of course you can just do things like color them differently mm. or whatever. And this this plastic is designed to make it takes paint really well. So that's another nice thing. Is that? Regular standal, standard standard uh, model paint or you, you can specialized buy, paint. You can buy Gundam. You can buy Gunpla paint. Um, Gunpla paint. You know, Bandai will be happy <laughs> to sell that to you too. Mm. And um, so yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of uh, cool stuff. Um, oh, the XEMG. Yeah, I saw actually the the box for the Gundam XEMG um, uh, uh, in at at Otakon at one point. It's it's like this big. I mean, it's just a box. Uh, it's, it's a huge model kit, and it lights up. Ooh! Yeah, so they have little LEDs in there. It's gorgeous. Whoa! And it's like a hundred bucks. Or I never thought or something. LEDs inside. Yeah. It. <laughs> so all the people who are makers and hackers mm. and tinkers could maybe even do something even more. Have Absolutely. it record or well, talk or. I mean, you, you imagine you scale this up by you know be basically twice the size. There's a fair amount of space in there for little batteries and lights and such. <laughs> so yeah, you can absolutely have fun with that. Motion sensor. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I said that on my desk. <laughs> yeah, totally. Somebody uses my mouse. No. <laughs> All right. So moving on to E7. Getting into the arms. Gotta love these winged arms. Yeah. A giant shoulder pad. The 80s. <laughs> style g1 so do most people get their kits from online stores or do they go to where do they go well you can get them at conventions um the advantage of conventions is that you're not going to pay shipping um it's generally going to be a little less expensive at a, a con but you're limited to the um inventory they bring so for example i got this at otakon last year um or maybe in katsukon i think it was katsukon the um uh, Gundam Bill Fighters had just come out like a month or two prior, uh, mm -hmm. so it must have been Katsukon. And um, and they only had three of those, they only brought three of those. Oh! They figured, yeah, it just came out, <laughs> it's only it's been fan sub. you know, what, what, are the, what are the odds? And I got there Friday at noon and got the last one. <laughs> so you never know. Pays to, pays to be quick. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it, it depends on what you want. Um, but. It's easier going online because you can get any model kit you want. Now, of course, they haven't. You know, Bandai has not produced model kits for every single Gundam at every single grade. Oh, they haven't. No, so I mean, but, but they, every uh, single Gundam, or um, I believe every single one. Yeah, just not every, not every scale. Yeah, not every scale. So you know, you may want this in extremely high grade, and it's not going to be available. Depends. Um, depends on popularity and lots of other things. Um, so you, you you can do some hunting to find what you're looking for. Um, so there's E7, C12. But yeah, so it's generally it's cons or online. Um, there just aren't that many other other options. Now, of course, in Japan, they have stores for these things. A whole store? A whole store. Um, they have some at the Gundam Well, with all the different possibilities, I, I imagine exactly. there must be a lot of models. And there are a lot of hobby stores that um, you know, sell uh, plastic model kits in general, and they'll sell, they'll sell Gundam too. So you get a lot of these um, little indie stores that um, sell, like you're saying, you know, tank model kits and um, um, model train materials and so forth, and they'll have stacks of Gundam model kits. I did notice at one of the conventions at one of the dealer stores, they did have other other models as well. I saw the mm. Battleship 
Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah, Yamato, yeah. At, at Yamato. And uh, there was uh, several different scales of it. Mm-hmm. Whew, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it really depends on how far you want to go into it. Um, what is that telling me to do? For... Uh, oh. Um, I think that's what I'm trying to do. Um, Part of the yeah, fun is trying to decode where. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what am I supposed to do next? <laughs> a little bit of uh, kind of guessing on some of these because sometimes the arrangement's not exactly obvious. But they do their best. But the tolerances so far are mm. fantastic. It's it's there's mm, there's not yeah. a lot of uh, slop that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, some models from the 80s <laughs> and 90s had. Yep. So they, they do a precise a precise job they of molding really the do. the plastic. Yeah. The tolerances are very very fine. So I suppose as an industry it, it's kind of gotten better and better. Yeah. Um, and they've just gotten used to how to how to build these things. Um, you know it, it takes precision, but once you get everything down, and of course being Bondi, they're a huge toy company, so they have a a, a lot of resources at their, at their disposal. B1, B2, G1, A30. As long as folks want to build their giant dioramas. Gundam Breaker, I'll have to check that out. A, uh, hmm. So uh, War Fanatic in our chat room is saying that um, there's a video about how to make your own mobile suit called Gundam Breaker. I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, sign me up. Well, and of course, there's Karatas, which is a, an actual mecha that a guy built. Um, that is like a full size, well, it's more like a um, Ghost in the Shell, um, Tachikoma style. Oh, thing. but yeah, it moves, Tachikoma. It, it responds to voice commands, and it can be yours for I think it's two million dollars. Oh, uh, <laughs> let me <laughs> let me check my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Um, but he says, yeah, he, he built it and he could he could produce multiple of them if people are willing to buy them. So mm. we will see. I suppose if you buy in bulk, you get a discount, yeah, probably <laughs> <laughs> bulk being three or more. <laughs> But you know, we're getting to that point where you can really get uh, a lot out of off-the-shelf parts. Okay, so does that go in there? I think so. Well, now this builds into a similar category. Mm -hmm. uh, do people three D print uh, models? So that is has been an interesting um, point recently. Is the whole, that whole that whole question, because yes, you certainly could. Um, yes, you certainly can. Um, the main issue, honestly, is that the tolerances in a 3D printer these days are not enough for this level of quality. Uh, so, so if it was a larger scale, yeah, it might work. But with a fine scale like this, yeah, exactly. Now you could do things like there are up on Thingiverse right now. It's one of the big uh, Thingiverse.com. Thingiverse. It's one of the big websites for. Uh, um, 3D printable models, there are several scans of Gundam model kits and such, and just um, 3D prints or 3D designs. So you could go in there and try to print one of these things as a, as a single object. Um, oh, it's a video game. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That's cool. Um, as a single object. That means right. without movable no, no arms? No posability, um, but you could print it as a, um, as a you know, sort of test experiment. Mm. So that is, that's certainly an option. This is not fitting in there at all the way they say it should. Hmm. So I don't know what they... Oh, maybe it's a different slot? Um, that goes in there, E7. <laughs> pops in like that. It's got to pop in like that. And this should go in. So this is where sometimes... Slot A, tab B, do not align. Yeah, um, sometimes it's a matter of looking at where it's going to go. And then getting a feel for it from there. So I know that goes there. So I know that should be. Uh, oh, I see. Yep. So what you do, that's where it goes. So you have to uh, kind of look ahead a few steps. And um, it's good. It's good to pre-read. Yeah. In case there's something unusual that. Yeah. Well, comes if, up. if you can't fit something in, it helps to to, to look forward because then you can say, ah. That part is all the way inside this other part. Do this on. before that. <laughs> right. So you can say, okay, this must fit in this way. Um, the only way I'm going to get that in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and that goes into B1. 
CBA. Now, I suppose if people are doing dioramas, they're yeah. going for a realistic look of mm -hmm. battle damage or yeah. scars. And that, 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 I imagine, is a whole different world of painting or Absolutely. decaling. Yeah, yeah. So you can do all sorts of stuff to simulate battle damage, to simulate uh, scarring and various things. And, of course, uh, we have a lot of that from, um, you know, just war model kits. The folks doing that for... Um, tanks and such. So oh. a lot of that has been uh, sort of transferred over to Gundam model kits. But there are some amazing dioramas of all these things that have gone through uh, the hell and back. <laughs> and of course, sometimes folks will want to represent a, a Gundam from a certain point where it has been it was lost an arm or things like that. Oh, wow. Lines. Sometimes you, you'll get those moments of a Gundam that's been badly damaged. The shield that's smashed. <laughs> yeah. There's this awesome thing at one of the Gundam um, model kit conventions where they wanted to show a sequence where a, um, a mobile suit was flying around an object. Hmm. So they made like 12 of the identical model kits and, and set them up um, in sequence. You know, each one moving all the way around. You see the all the way around. It was cool. Brilliant idea. Okay, so that goes, the one that goes there. There we go. And then we have some kind of a Another decal. Wow, lots of little decals. I think I'm going to. So here's one of the things. Sometimes the decals can wait for later. Sometimes they really can't. So that is 20 because if you wait for later, then it's really hard to get in there. Hmm. So that's going to go. Yeah, I'm going to put that in now. You also notice sometimes these. Uh, kits, they'll have little tabs on them, so you notice kind of the slots there, here and here. See, there's a kind of a slot there, and a slot Ooh, there, and a yeah. slot there. That means to bend them over, fold them over. Ah, the folds, yeah, yes. Yeah, so you fold them over, so you get a nice, precise edge. It's good to have crisp edges. Yep. And then 19 on the other side. <laughs> yeah, um... Some folks can 3D print guns. You can 3D print weapons for your uh, Gundam. A there Gundam go. gun. A Gundam gun. <laughs> and actually, 3D printing would be a pretty good um, thing for weapons for, for a Gundam because you don't need as, as high tolerances for, for a model kit. You don't need as high tolerances for that. You need to be able to fit into the hand. But other than that, it's basically um, just a, a relatively few angles. So 3D printing would be a, a good um, thing for toy guns. <laughs> The problem with 3D printing real guns is plastic doesn't really hold up to explosive firing that much. Yeah. Sometimes, but 16 and 15. All right, so. But that opens up the whole category of, of potential for not only customizing, but customizing huge sections of the Gundam yeah. that, are, that, that, that Bandai never envisioned. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you can totally do some really special custom stuff to say, well, I have my own vision for how these, these shows should go. I want a gun that looks like something from a different genre altogether. Exactly. Or you can do a steampunk gun. A st <laughs> and also to that point, you can take things that have been designed for other scales and just print it at a scale suitable for your Gundam. Oh, so, resize. Yeah, so just resize it, and it's good to go. Um, and then we're going to do... Ah, now we're doing the the arm. So C10. You can see how this quickly becomes very absorbing. Yes. Once you get into it, you sort of kind of understand how it all fits together. And it's just a kind of a matter of going piece by piece. C10. C31 and C21. Imagine, yeah, you know, there, there are people whose jobs it is to design these. Design exactly how these are laid out on the sheet. Now that could be pretty tricky, I mm -hmm. imagine, from a for not not only do you have to know how to make it work, but mm -hmm. how to make it sound structurally yeah. and how to lay it out for the most efficient use and make sure that it's not going to uh, end up halfway 
baked, <laughs> so to speak, where only half of the plastic fills the holes yep. and then the part is no longer usable. And that's why Sunrise wanted to specialize in these things, because they can sit down with a toy company and say, okay, is this too complicated to build an ex a reasonable model kit out of? You know, is this going to be something where our target audience of eight-year-olds is going to have to buy a $60 model kit because it's just that, that complicated? <laughs> so ideally, you'll, you'll get people um, kind, of, kind of working on how to make that, make that work so that you, you arrive at a good middle ground between what everyone's looking for. Um, so that the mecha designer can design something that is reasonable, so to speak, while the C23. Um, uh, so that everyone's happy. It's something that everyone can, can enjoy. Um, and it, it hits a, a nice minimal boundary. Um, what is my what is our favorite Gundam show? What's your favorite Gundam show? Well, I am a newbie to the whole Gundam world mm -hmm. and I am exploring it for the first time. There we go. So, I'm seeing uh we we just watched uh the first five episodes of uh Mobile Suit Gundam. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see the next ones. <laughs> and I understand it's a huge franchise. So, it's a whole use it sounds like that I can explore. So, I'm not sure what mine will be. But this is the one I'm cutting my teeth on. There we go. So I'm curious what uh, what some of our folks have uh, found to be their favorite. Yeah. Kind of why that is, and uh, goes is it is it is it your favorite because it was your first exposure, or mm -hmm. your favorite because of a particular characteristic, say the plot, the characters, the the Gundam itself, the design. <laughs> The animation, which uh, yeah. as as we were uh, checking out some of the other series previews, mm -hmm. it's got a whole history of development that's that's changed over time as yeah. animation has come along, and uh, I'm kind of curious what what all you guys yeah. find uh, to be your favorites. <laughs> yeah, I did a panel on Gundam um, at Katsukon and. I told people that Gundam Wing, one of the fan favorites, is not a, a, a show I'd recommend to newbies. And folks were shocked because so many people became <gasps> Gundam through that uh, on Toonami. I said, oh, it's a weird series. You know, I love it. It's a great show. But I, I, I wonder how many people, like you were saying before, how many people love it because it was their first Gundam series. Hmm. Um, and it just you know, kind of happened to be there as opposed to for how many of it, it really is a, an effective first Episode or first show. Hmm. Uh, e two, e two. Hard to say. Gundam Seed is your favorite. Nice. Gundam Seed. I, th that hmm. is um, that is an excellent choice, Wolfnatic. I'm I'm to the point where somebody, and I don't know their preferences, and they say, "What Gundam should I start with?" Seed is one of the ones I, I point to because it's, it's modern. It looks um, fresh. It looks like the kinds of shows folks are used to, and it tells a nice big war story. And it borrows some from original Gundam initially. So you have that familiarity if you if you move on from there. And that goes on like that. And then we have a sticker, number 24. Woo! -hoo. That's fine. Number 24. And then um, William Gaunt's your favorite gonna build fighters? That's awesome. That is a really fun show. That is that would certainly be in my kind of top. Um, just sort of fan favorite kind of Gundam shows. Just, just, just such a fun show. Um, where does that wrap around? Could you tell me where your sticker goes? That would be nice. Um, does it go there? Ooh, I think it goes there. Yeah, little bob right on the end. This is this is definitely a, a skill that develops patience mm -hmm. and and the ability to pay attention to small details is yeah. is quite an asset not just in this area <laughs> but in a lot of areas of life yep and when you're done you have something that you made i did that i did that exactly um and there's a lot to be said for having something that came uh, directly out of your own labor and then you can play around with you can you know we plan to do some some fun playing around with his model kit. You know, I have a couple of model kits that I I like and I want to keep pristine. And this is one where oh, I can play around a little bit with it. <laughs> so 
Seen was your first. But X is still an all-time favorite. Yes, X is a really fun one. Sadly, X um, was not very popular when it came out, so it was uh, canceled early. But it was a fun little action adventure series. I listened to a soundtrack a lot. Hmm. Amazing soundtrack. Ooh, gorgeous. A good soundtrack can make all the difference. No kidding. I'd play some, but we get booted off the air. Yeah, that's one of the one of the areas that uh, is too bad. We we can't yeah. play the music for yeah. a lot of things. So. Yeah, we we love to be playing anime music here, but folks have kind of uh, clamped down on that in the streaming world. What exactly? War Fanatic. Um, uh, Seed was very popular with folks who weren't hugely familiar with with Gundam. Like they may have heard about it, but they certainly were not hardcore fans. But hardcore fans, at least in America, didn't like Seed. And in Japan, I get the feeling that there was there were plenty of hardcore Gundam fans who were more than pleased with Seed. But for some reason, in America, it got this this weird, strong negative reaction. Hmm. I wonder why why it got that reception. Well, part of the problem was that it started off by um, uh, copying a few um, plot elements from original Gundam. Hmm. Um, so the main character is a 15-year-old boy who stumbles onto a giant robot, uh, onto a Gundam, and then he ends up on a, a big capital ship that is trying to flying through space. Um, so a lot of those, those basic things are there, but they veer off from that pretty quickly, and that was pretty clearly their attempt to say, okay, we're going to... Um, um, you know, include these elements, but it's not like they were trying to directly um, say, you know, we're only going to do these these plot elements. But I, I think that um, annoyed people. People thought it was just a ripoff. Hmm. Um, and then they just kind of ignored it, sadly. Okay, come on. Get in there. Get in there. For me, I, I usually have to watch at least half a season before hmm. I can draw a definite conclusion on anything yeah that's wise uh, and and sometimes shows will take a very different twist <laughs> and almost even change genre depending yeah. upon uh where where the authors take it and it, yeah. it, it it's kind of fun to to see a series that i think is going nowhere finally pick up pace and okay i'm getting into it yeah. now or it's funny about anime often a series with a really lackluster first three episodes will really pick up steam in the last um, last half and become a really interesting. <laughs> I show. want more. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a show that starts really strong often will have a, a kind of a lackluster ending. Hmm. Funny how sometimes that works. Okay, so this goes on uh, like that. Okay, and then we clip it into this. Uh, let's see here. So that is that way. As I size up my pieces. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there we go. All right. I've got part of an arm. Oh, I need another piece. <laughs> Good. D26. E and then do we get... Ah, C29. So we're getting close on the... The hand. C26. Yep, yeah, there's the test. Yeah. Now this is an example of, of a, a uh, it will you will be able to open and close the, the hand, but the, the fingers don't move. That's what the higher grade models will be able to do. Frankly, I'm just amazed you can actually open and close the hands in this, this scale. <laughs> um, and the soap opera stuff in the beginning of Gundam that's true. There, there was a lot of Soap opera elements, if you will, of uh, of original seed. Mm. Um, and granted, I mean, I was no big fan of the character of Flay Alster. I think she was kind of a uh, not the most fun and interesting character. I know where they were going with her, but it was just kind of like <sighs> a thirteen. Okay, so there's the thing. Where's the rest of the hand? Where's the rest of the hand? There's the twenty nine. And then there's the huh, interesting. Have the part of the hand, but I don't. have all the Gundam been translated into English dub uh, versions or um, no? And some of them probably never will be. Um, really? So what what, uh, what happened was um, Bandai, the company that owns Gundam, uh, had a an American 
licensing you know company licensing arm and they were trying to sell gundam in america but they had a tough time doing so hmm. uh well moving moving backwards um throughout the 70s and 80s bandai tried selling gundam in america but they could never really find the right way to do it uh, it never really came together nobody was interested um and so eventually they um yeah, there we go um Eventually, they ended up showing Gundam on Toonami by showing Gundam Wing back in the day. And, oh, no, you can't even move the thing. Oh, that's a shame. Um, <laughs> Got it snapped together. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Um, so Gundam Wing came out in America. And do we not put that on yet? Oh, we could. Um, and it was a huge success in America. Hmm. So um, Bondi thought, great, this is it. This is our entry to, to America. And they decided that they would um, just start releasing all the Gundam series in America. So they'd all get wow. dubbed and released. And uh, that didn't go over so well. Oh. Because the next Gundam they tried to bring over here was original Mobile Suit Gundam on Toonami. And most 12-year-olds watching Toonami just were not ready for... 1979 animation. Oh, that's that, yeah, the difference in what they're used to seeing and, hey, why is this uh, old technology ty yeah, type? Yeah, exactly. Um, so Mobile Suit Gundam just did not do well on Cartoon Network. Hmm. So um, uh, Bandai released a few more, uh, uh, some just on DVD, and then Bandai America was shut down by the Bandai uh, corporate entity. So wow. um, they, were, and they were in the middle of working on various releases of Gundam. Um, so those never saw the light of day, but recently, just I believe last year, Right Stuff, hmm. the the anime company over here, they got the rights to Gundam from uh, from Bandai. So they're now releasing all the rest of the Gundam series. They they now say they they're committed to releasing all of them. They probably will not dub all of them though. So is there a Bandai USA anymore? Not anymore. Is it, it's completely no, gone. It's gone. And so yeah, they have standard. to channel it through other yeah. folks. So mm -hmm. Right Right Stuff. So right stuff has the Gundam license, and they're going to be releasing everything. So <laughs> it, it's kind of tricky the whole who owns what and how they right. release through where. Yeah. I guess with every international transaction, there are several different people who are involved, mm -hmm. and uh, success or failure can get spread to a point where you need somebody to act as an intermediary. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, it get complicated. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not talking about Stargazer because Stargazer was kind of an interesting side project. So Stargazer um, back in the mm -hmm. '90s, Bandai tried to make a live-action Gundam series or work, and mm -hmm. they ended up making a movie in Canada, a uh, live-action uh, Gundam movie in Canada using Canadian actors and CGI. Um, many Gundam fans do not speak of this. <laughs> um, it was it was that much of a of, of a. Of a failed yeah, effort. It, it was a debacle. I, I, I've seen it. It is um, um, the writers obviously knew enough about Gundam to put in certain common Gundam story tropes. Hmm. So certain things you see a lot of in Gundam do show up in. in I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, you're, I'm sorry. You said Stargazer. I'm Stargazer. thinking um, something different. I'm thinking of uh, no Stargazer was a Gundam seed thing. Um, I'm thinking of. Oh, uh, what's the name of it? I gotta look it up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. I'm thinking the wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, G Savior. G Savior is what I'm thinking hmm. of. Um, so G Savior, yeah. G G Savior is a uh, it was a live action Gundam uh, work, and um, yeah, it, 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 the effects were not up to snuff. The acting was. They were trying their best, but they just, you know, they didn't have what they needed to, to do what they needed to do. Uh, it's a, it was a debacle. It was a complete debacle. And Gundam just doesn't really usually fit very well into a 90-minute format. Hmm. Um, it's a you know, big war epics. It's you know, a sprawling story. So that was a bit of a problem. Um, you know, Stargazer was completely different. Stargazer was a uh, an OVA set in the Gundam Seed universe, the Gundam Seed timeline. Hmm. Um, which was released in three episodes directly to the internet. Hmm. So it was a, an original net animation, if you will. And um, that confused a lot of people. Um, it was a kind of a weird approach. It had its own... Um, it, it, well, as it turned out... Um, one second. Basically, Bondi was starting to experiment with 
releasing th- things on the internet. And this was hmm. this would have been mid two thousands, so there wasn't a lot of bandwidth, and but folks knew that internet distribution was going to be a big thing someday. Yeah. So start so for Stargazer, they said let's let's make an original work just for the internet and release it and see what happens. Happens. Just mm. see what the, what the response is. So, Stargazer was is basically three more or less um, distinct episodes, all woven together by certain plot threads. They're basically, three different stories um, set in the Gundam Seed, Seed universe, uh, with a couple of characters sort of um, interspersed uh, within them. So, the problem is, Stargazer came out, and folks thought they were getting a three episode OVA story, hmm. but instead oh. they were getting these, these little short stories. Yeah. yeah. So, folks were really confused by that. So, it wasn't so much a webisode as it was a, a web release standalone yeah. story. It, 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 was, it was sort of like these, um, these, these movies that consist of short films, where you'll do like hmm. a short film and Oh, a short, yeah. Yeah. So, it was really an anthology um, uh, with, with, again, some interconnected uh, plot threads. So people just got really confused by that, and it kind of um, put a sour note on the Seed universe for a while. That's too bad um, to see an effort fail. Exactly. Um, and then the other problem was that the um, Gundam Seed was written by, written and directed by a husband and wife team. Mm. And the wife got seriously ill oh. um, around the time of Star Wars. Oh, that's too bad. she hit the hospital. So they were working on plans for a Gundam Seed movie, but everything sc- screeched to a halt. And um, that is still t- that, 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 that movie has still technically never been taken off the books. But it, it's never, you know, nothing. There's ever still hope. Yeah, there's still hope. Um, so we're kind of waiting for her to get better for anything more to happen. Hmm. Well, we've been going for uh, over an hour now, so I think this is a good time to to pause in our Gundam building. We're both see how far we are. So you're we're much further down. than I am. That's okay. That's all right. Like I'm, said, you have I'm a, getting a, my pieces and parts a together. Rather more complicated thing. Oh, good. So your your, your torso is almost complete. Wow, lots of little bits and bobs, yeah. Lots of yeah. little little pieces, parts. Cool, cool. Sweet. All right. Well, like I said, we will uh, continue this stream some other time. We're going to be doing a couple of these, building these model kits, and we'll talk more about Gundam as we uh, we continue on. But uh, thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. Take care, guys. Thanks for joining. Oh, what am I doing over here? Uh, uh, there, there it is. There, there. Thanks right, for guys. joining thank you. Gundam Style. Open Gundam Star. Open.